reiterates adherence to a peaceful solution to crisis in Syria according to the UN Charter, the Geneva Statement and non-intervention in the country's affairs. In a TV interview, General Frege says Syria will remain unified and the terrorists will not succeed in tearing it apart. Our armed forces eliminate a number of Al-Nusra Front terrorists in Hama, destroy terrorist hideouts and crush dozens of them. Good afternoon, I am Mira Dukrikorian from the News Center in Damascus. The Deputy Foreign and Expatriates Minister, Dr. Faisal Maqdad, has discussed with his Chinese counterpart, Chai Jian, the crisis in Syria and ways to solve it. During his visit to the capital, Beijing, Al Maqdad reviewed with the Chinese side the political program that would lead to a solution in Syria and the executive steps the Syrian government is taking in this respect. The Syrian and Chinese sides also exchanged viewpoints on the crisis in Syria and means to solve it. The Chinese side reiterated adherence to a peaceful solution to the crisis according to the UN Charter, international law, the Geneva Statement and non-intervention in Syria's internal affairs. At the conclusion of the talks, the two sides surveyed issues of common interest related to the development of bilateral relations between the two countries in all domains. Deputy Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Armed Forces, Minister of Defense, General Fahad Jassim al has stressed that the failure of the scheme to undermine Syria from the outside has driven the conspirators to try to undermine it from the inside, supported in this by Arab funds and terrorist tools who came from abroad carrying takfiri thought and recruiting their agents inside the country. Israel al Amr no in an interview with the Syrian TV, General Freish said the Israeli enemy has given orders to the armed terrorist groups to target Syrian air defenses and put them out of service because it knows that Syrian aircraft cover all the country's area and are capable of preventing Israeli warplanes from penetrating our airspace. General Frege added that the failure of the terrorist tools in attacking the scientific research center in Jemraya has caused Israel to intervene and carry out its aggressions in an act of retaliation after the losses its terrorist agents and tools have incurred. General Frege said the armed groups have targeted the state's infrastructure that includes hospitals, schools and factories as well as basic services centers like energy, electricity and water, in addition to roads and modes of communication. This means General Frege added that they have targeted Syrian citizens in the first place. General Frege said the armed forces would do their best to protect the economic and services installations and ensure citizens access to supplies and commodities. He called on our citizens to cooperate with the armed forces in revealing the whereabouts of the terrorists so that they can be pursued and eliminated. He pointed out that the armed forces delay entrance into any area occupied by the armed men in order to alleviate losses in lives and buildings and properties. Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad said that the Israeli aggression on a scientific research center in Damascus countryside is a result of weakness by the Zionist government. In an interview with Al Mayadeen TV channel, Ahmadinejad asserted that Iran supports all countries in the region and it opposes any aggression on or occupation of these countries. Iranian President emphasized that the Syrian people is the only one who has the right to choose his leadership, calling for more efforts to be exerted in order to to achieve national understanding, rejecting sedition and holding a free election that should be respected by the others. Ahmadinejad pointed out that Iran doesn't interfere in Syria's internal affairs and its position is based on the right of the Syrian people to hold a free election a process that needs to restore security. Ahmadinejad stressed that the war in Syria is not the pressing solution.
unit of the Syrian Arab Army carried out a successful operation today, eliminating a terrorist group that had been committing acts of killing and looting near the gas station of al Qudaymani in the area of Sheikh Saeed in Aleppo. An official source said that the operation resulted in the killing of all members of the terrorist group, including its leader, who is called Abdul Rahman Mkhaybar al-Shaghil, Hassan al-Shaghil, Hussein Hamdan al-Alawi, and Hamza Abdul Sattar Hantoush. A military source has said that our armed forces have eliminated a number of Al-Qaeda-linked Nusra Front terrorists in al mughir village in Hama northern suburbs and confiscated large quantities of weapons and ammunition including dozens of motor guns, sniping rifles and RPG shells. Our army units continue today their operations against armed terrorist groups in Homs and Idlib suburbs, destroying their hideouts and the weapons, ammunition and criminal tools they contained and killing the terrorists therein. One such operation was carried out against a hideout of a terrorist leader in al village in Homs suburbs. The army destroyed the hideout completely and killed the terrorists therein. Another army unit pursued fleeing terrorists in Jobar and al dabaa in Homs suburbs, killing and injuring them. And and destroying a vehicle full of arms and ammunition. In Idlib suburbs, an army unit eliminated a number of terrorists in an operation against their hideout in the town of Binnish. The armed men used the place as a headquarter where they planned their criminal acts against citizens and public and private properties. In Dar Zor, a unit of the Syrian Arab Army destroyed many terrorist hideouts in Al Jbele, Al Hwaqa, the seven kilometers, and Al Ummal neighborhood, killing many terrorists, including Mu'in Hamoud Al Bkhet, Ayman Yunus Al Jader, Ibrahim Alawi, Al Musa, and others. In cooperation with the residents, a unit of the Syrian Arab Army fended off a terrorist group that had attacked the village of Al Hassan, killing many terrorists, including the group's leader, Mohammed Sirmani. In Damascus, a unit of the Syrian Arab Army followed an attempt of a suicide bomber to blow himself up in a car bomb in a residential area in Khan al -Shih. The army unit targeted the car bomb before it entered the area, which led to an explosion killing the terrorist only. In Damascus countryside, Syrian Arab army continued clearing the town of Daraya of the terrorists, killing many of them and attacking their gatherings in the northwest of the town. The army forces also restored security to the area surrounding the cultural center, which was a hideout of the terrorist groups. The terrorist groups haven't spared the religious places, such as Al-Amin al-Sadiq Mosque, from being destroyed. On the other hand, the Syrian Arab army discovered many tunnels and trenches dug by the terrorists near a Sadiq Mosque to use them as hideouts and stores for their weapons. Egyptian opposition party, the People's Current, announced yesterday the death of Mohammed al-Jindi, a party member who died of wounds sustained as a result of being tortured by Egyptian police. In a statement, the party said that 28-year-old al-Jindi died on Sunday morning after he suffered severe torture by the police. More than 60 people were killed in Egypt's ongoing demonstrations calling for President Morsi to step down. For his part, Egyptian Minister of Education Mohammed Saber Arab submitted his resignation yesterday in protest against the deteriorating situation in Egypt and the authorities' disgraceful handling of the crisis. Meanwhile, U.S. State Department spokeswoman Victoria Noland denounced the violence used by the Egyptian police against the protesters, particularly beating unarmed demonstrators in front of the presidential palace in Cairo, calling to punish those involved in such violations. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more news about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Nariman Qassam after a short break.
Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The manager of the hydrocarbons company stressed that the gasoline and other oil production crisis is about to be solved within a few days. As the company distributed 2 million and 200 thousand liters of gasoline to the stations of Damascus and its countryside, as for the gas unit of Adra, he said that they have been repairing it after a cut off for several days due to the current security circumstances while the gas cylinders will be distributed in order to prevent another crisis. The General Customs Directorate asserted that its revenues dropped in bulk, not in value, as most of the imported items included food, medicine and medical equipment. The directorate said that more than 1,200 imported raw materials were exempted from the customs fees since the beginning of the current year, which caused reducing the revenues compared with last year. However, the customs directorate voiced op optimism concerning the revenue despite the current crisis in Syria. The directorate pointed out that the agreement which was signed between Syria and Iran will create new gates for exporting Syrian products. The chairman of the Poultry Breeders Committee emphasized that Syria is the first among the Arab countries in exporting chickens and their productions and the third in producing them till the first half of the previous year. As the production approached 4.5 billion eggs in the year 2010, showing that in spite of the crisis, Syria is still maintaining some of the Arab markets for exporting, especially in Iraq, in Iraq while the investments in this sector exceeded 150 billion Syrian pounds. Oil dropped for a second day in New York after sliding the most in two months yesterday before a report that showed the rising stockpiles in the U.S., the world's biggest crude consumer, as the futures fell as much as 0.3 percent after losing 1.6 percent yesterday. Brent for March settlement declined 51 cents per barrel on the London-based ICE Futures Europe Exchange. European shares climbed, rebounding from their biggest plunge in more than three months as the U.S. index futures also advanced, while the Asian shares fell, dragging the regional benchmark equities index down from an 18-month high amid renewed concerns about Europe's debt crisis. Also, the Nikkei index dropped below 1% during processes of profit-taking. Spot Gold registered a slight rise while the prices of the Platinum and the Platinum were down today after registering the highest levels in months during the previous session. Whereas the improvement in the economic forecasts helped both the Palladium and the Platinum to excel the gold and the silver since the beginning of this year with the rising demands for these two metals which are, which are used mainly in industrial and jewelry production. advanced against both the US dollar and the yen as a report boosted the demands for the shared currency. The 17-nation common currency re reversed earlier declines, while the US dollar may extend gains and touch 94 yens for the first time in more than two years.
Ladies and gentlemen, this was our economic news for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.